everybody on the gas and off the gas. Uh, you know, today is a uh, very special day for all of us because I believe that it is for the first time that this conference is being held in West Bengal. And all of you by participating in this have really become part of history. And uh, on this occasion, one thing I want you to remember is that this conference is part of a lifelong learning initiative. So, as you can see, there is a triple L there. So, those who have not come to this conference miss the opportunity of keeping themselves updated on a very important aspect of patient care and that is nutrition aspect. And the other theme of the conference is, you know, uh, early recovery after surgery, ERAS, early recovery after surgery. So, the main concentration of the discussions today will be around the steps to be taken where nourishment can be linked to surgery so that patient's recovery is faster. Now, there is something I want to share with you. I do not want to give a very heavy loaded pedantic lecture. But it was not too long ago, it was only in 1936 that uh, Haram Studley of uh, the College of Medicine in Cleveland, USA, he discovered that when he did a series of peptic ulcer surgery, he found that for patients who were nutritionally compromised, those whose nutrition was not up to the mark, there was a mortality of 33%. So one third of the people who underwent peptic ulcer surgery and were nutritionally not up to the mark, they died. And compared to those whose nutritional status was good, only 3.5% died. So I think this was the first time that they could appreciate the fact that there is a definite connection between the nutritional status of a person and his recovery after surgery. And whatever we are discussing today is a continuity of that. And subsequently a lot of work has been done and uh, gradually it was found that in specific surgical situations there could be specific problems encountered. And what exactly happens uh, after a surgical procedure is done, you know, the patient undergoes some kind of an injury, it is an injury. An injury, whether it is a surgically inflicted injury or whether it is an accidental injury, is an injury. And when an injury happens, the body's fighting mechanism, the body's immune system, it undergoes some kind of a reorganization. And as a result, what happens is the fighting tools of the body, the immune, the immune uh, mechanism of the body, the fighting tools like the neutrophils, the macrophages and others, uh, they somehow or other start misbehaving. Their actual function is disabled. And also the uh, loss of blood and the loss of other body fluids and other things, uh, this leads to a shift of the cellular structures from some of the vital organs to some of the other organs of the body. For example, whatever is, you know, stored in the protein issues material, glycogen, etc., stored in liver and other organs, that gets shifted to kind of skeletal organs. And as a result of that, there is something like a protein calorie malnutrition, a protein calorie mismatch. As a result of this, uh, the patients become more prone to infection, you know, uh, contrary to what we think, we always think that if a patient gets infected after surgery, possibly it was because there was a problem with the sterilization of the instrument, there was a problem with cleaning of the patient, etc. But no, it is a nutritional com uh, compromise also, which can lead to infection in the body. It can lead to delayed recovery, it can lead to the formation of, you know, bed sores and decubitus ulcers and all this. All this comes due to nutritional compromise. And in specific situations, for example, these days, if you have heard, uh, there is a surgery for bariatric surgery. Bariatric surgery is something where a patient who is extremely obese, extremely fat, there they do a type, type of surgery by virtue of which the volume of the gastrointestinal or particularly the gastric volume is uh, substantially reduced. As a result of which, the patient's food intake gets controlled or the food intake gets 
uh, reoriented. And in this what happens, there is a uh, mixed, uh, you know, there is malnutrition only confined to minerals of the body. And if there is a malnutrition of minerals, there will be certain kind of patients profile. If there is a malnutrition of vitamins, there will be certain other kind of patients profile. But in certain other major surgeries, for example, when you talk of plastic and reconstructive surgery, where many of the major operations are based on implantation of flaps, making of flaps for covering wounds or for uh, making up, uh, uh, you know, different kind of approaches in trying to make up the gaps caused by burn, scars caused by burn, or loss of tissue due to injuries and other. So when they make those flaps, if there is a malnourishment, these flaps, they do not come, they do not stay there. So the flaps, they give way, uh, you know, they are rejected by the body. Similarly, when you come to cardiovascular surgery, in cardiovascular surgery, most of the operations for, you know, particularly open heart surgery for valve replacement and others, it is done by cutting open the sternum, it's called sternotomy. And if the patients are not nutritionally adequate, then, you know, the sternal healing suffers. So the patients have a breakdown of the sternal wound. So all these uh, kind of things happen. And another thing that happens is that, you know, we often, when we treat a patient, we are not aware of the comorbid conditions. For example, you know, a doctor may treat a patient for whatever he has got, but he may forget to investigate the patient for the presence of diabetes mellitus or any other immunocompromise or any renal disorder on that. So, uh, children, my message today is that when you talk of nutrition, we have to look at another aspect and that aspect is that we have to also educate the surgeons about the need for their patient's nourishment. You know, that is not the concentration on today's discussion, but there is something that you must all keep in mind, that as nutritionalists, as dietitians, as specialists who are going to combat malnutrition, you have to educate the surgeons and those who are students of surgery and in this context I would like to you know request madam and others to take an initiative that the surgeons must be told that their job does not start and finish with going cutting off the patient making the correction and then stitching up the wound. They also have to make sure that they have a proper assessment of the nutritional status of the patient especially you know in emergencies you cannot of course do this because when there is an emergency uh, whatever be the patient's condition, the surgery has to be given because the accidental situation or a situation where there is, a, uh, you know, hardly any possibility of any delay to build up the nutritional status of the patient. But in what is known as elective surgery and what is known as planned surgery, the surgeons or the surgical team or all of you nutritionalists, dietitians in the hospitals who are asked to fix up the diet for the patient, when the patient is admitted, even before the surgery takes place, you have to all ensure that the surgeon gets the patient in an optimal nutritional condition. So if you give a thought to that and also if you plan a proper nutritional regime, depending on the type of surgery, where the patient will get optimal nutrition even after the surgical you know, procedure, whether he is able to take it per orally or whether he has to be given it intravenously or whether there is, you know, we have to create a route, you know, for some kind of bowel disorder, we may have to do something like a jejunostomy or gastrostomy or some other feeding approach. So all these things have to be kept in mind and my message to you, my request to you rather, it is not even an advice, a request to you that whenever as nutritionalists, as dietitians, you are called upon to take care of patients who are due to undergo surgery or you know have undergone surgery. Kindly keep in mind these things and share this with your surgical colleagues. Share this with those who are trainees, the interns, the the junior residents, the surgical postgraduates, the registrars. You have to tell them that this is a very important aspect and on looking after the proper nutritional condition of the patient. You know, very largely depends the early recovery in those patients. So, with that, uh, I think the take-home message is that do whatever best is possible so that ERAS is implemented. 
Hirasa's early recovery after surgery. And uh, with this, I congratulate the organizers of this program for this lifelong learning initiative. And I would like to tell them that do not get disheartened because the chairs are empty. But please feel sad for those, please feel sorry for those. You know, you have to feel pity for those who have missed this world now.